you reap what you sow. So it takes time. You it's like a farmer. You have to plant your crop and tend to it and, you know, hope that you have a good harvest, right? And that, that doesn't happen overnight. So this is Holly. Can I help you? Yeah, Holly. My name's Caleb. I'm doing like a research project and I'm trying to figure out like what realtors like problems are because I've, I've thought about doing like mindset coaching and like lead gen. A couple of agents have talked about that. So I was just trying to figure out if there's any other like problems that you faced at all by any chance that like if it was removed, it would make your life 10 times easier. Um, that would be uh, something I need to put a little thought <laughs> into. Uh, <laughs> I know I kind of called you right out of the uh, blue, which is my, and I put you right on the spot. I was like, Hey Holly, do you have an answer for this? You're like, um, hold on, maybe not. So that that's on me right there. I, I have noticed though, like that a lot of realtors I have called don't pick up their phones. Clearly that's not you. So I'm like, clearly you're doing a lot better than 99% of all these other realtors are. So I'm like, I don't even know if you have problems at this point in time. Oh, there's always issues and problems. Um, shoot me an email and um, I will try to get back to you with me. Yeah. Um, in, in the meantime though, just, I'll just ask you this. Have you ever hired a coach by any chance? to like help you with like your mind or the business or sales or anything like that? Um, I do coaching through um, my managing broker. And is that with T Tom, I think was what it was, Tom Ferry or something like that? Or is it a different coach? Uh, no, I mean, I've gone to, I've gone to seminars with Tom Ferry. Um, I do, I've, I'm a ninja agent. Um, I'm, I've done seminars with Brian Buffini. So um, I, very try to stay in tuned with the professionals like that. Um, but one-on-one -on -one coaching, I have not. And I just, uh, my uh, managing broker provides such good uh, direction. So I really haven't needed that right now. I, I mean, I can tell you because like you pick up the phone. So I mean, like clearly they're doing <laughs> something right. <laughs> oh, yes, I, 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 that is a problem. <laughs> communication is hard when you can't reach the other end <laughs> it really is and i'm like it's people like it could be a buyer or seller that's trying to give you their money and it's like people aren't picking up the phone and i'm like what like it just i don't understand it i'm like i always pick up the phone regardless of who calls i think part of it right now is i get so many spam calls and i mean i just had three right in front of you i mean i was almost like Ugh, is this another this? one <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so i think i mean phone identifies it says nonprofit. it says spam it says telemarker which is like great i actually don't answer those mm -hmm. <laughs> and i figure if it got in there by mistake they would leave a voicemail hold on but maybe that could be part of it that people are just so inundated so you but you listen to your voicemails then oh absolutely as soon as i get one yeah uh, okay because i've heard some people like my generation and a little bit younger too and i'm not like i'm in my mid-20s we just don't listen i listen to my voicemails but i'm different than a lot of people in my generation so it's just it's cool seeing that people still do that because everybody's like oh don't leave voicemails but you're saying like yeah that's a good way to know whether or not it's a spam call versus like a telemarketer or something like that then well uh, i mean yeah i mean I, i'm i'm an old and so i grew up in sales and marketing and your voicemail was crucial so that's just something that's ingrained in me um but you're right like my children you're not listening to their voicemails <laughs> they're, they're... call me back from my voicemails <laughs> in fact it says they're full 20 percent or 90 percent of the time <laughs> so um i don't know <laughs> they're busy like scrolling um, tiktok and instagram and getting texts and all these other notifications and it's just like i don't have time to listen to a voicemail well, they don't even pick up the phone. I have to text them with a message saying, "Call me back right away." <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what the answer is. On. Yeah, I don't either. I've thought maybe AI or something like that. Maybe that for helping people pick up the phone or like having them call back. Like, hey, so and so is busy. They'll give you a call back in five seconds or five minutes whenever they get a second. Just at least so there's that like interest to know that like, hey, I received your call, but I'm busy. Like, I'll call you back in a moment or something like that, but I don't know if that's something but, that would help at all, out at all or not. But like your generation, would you consider yourself a millennial or younger than a millennial? Millennial. 
Okay. Would you leave a message if you got that message from an AI? Or would you just be like, I'll either call back or I'll move on? I would call back. So I always call back okay. whenever I get phone calls. That's just my, like with me being in sales and marketing as well too. Like whenever I get a call, like I call back right away. Whereas I feel like a lot of people in sales or in real estate, they're like, they dread when the phone rings. And I'm just like, that doesn't Are, make sense. No, I mean like you um, looking for a service person or a vendor, mm -hmm. or if you were looking for an agent for yourself or buying or selling, would you leave a message if you got that response? Oh, so like I was, I guess I'm more referring to like, if I was like reaching out like via an ad or something like that, and I got a call and it was from an AI mm -hmm. like, hey, I, I don't think I would leave a message at that point in time. But like if I got a call from like, say I was reaching out to you or buyers were reaching out to you. And then at that point in time, it's like, then the AI would follow back up with that person all right away from a different number or a text from a different number and say X and X agent is busy at this moment. They'll call you back as soon as they get a free second or something like that. So it's more of like mm -hmm. just an acknowledgement, but I personally would because I'd be like, okay, at least this person's like reaching out. Like I've had a couple of different agents text me and I just haven't gotten back to the text because I'm like, I'd rather have the face-to-face -face call or at least like just a call because I believe that there's more personality within that compared to like a text or an email or something like that. So I would personally, yes. I don't know how many other like, people would though. I mean, my voicemail message says that. So if you got my voicemail, it would say, I'll call you back within, you know, a short period of time. So pretty much the same thing. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure that out myself too. I do have one other question for you, Holly, though, if you don't mind. In regards to those seminars and like the the group coaching and things like that, did you find value from doing that? Uh, the seminars? Yeah. Sure, I do. Yeah, I always do. I always learn something new no matter how long I've been doing something. There's, there's always something you get out of it. That's awesome because I've had some people too where they're like, why would I pay $2,000 to go see somebody talk? Or why would I pay five grand for a coach? Or why would I do this? And I'm just like, well, maybe that's why you are where you are. Not trying to like say that they aren't at a good place, but that's always just kind of like things that I kind of think about because I've, I've invested in myself and it seems like a lot of people don't want to invest in themselves nowadays, which I kind of find kind of sad. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tough. It kind of depends on where you are in, in your life financially. So um, there's a lot that might play into that. True. Very true. Well, I appreciate you giving me the time, Holly. Um, and sure. I'm going to take some of this thought into consideration and see what I can come up with. And I mean, it sounds like you're already doing pretty well for yourself. It didn't seem like you had any major problems that arised. And I mean, I think you've already sold like quite a decent amount of homes this year and over the years. So it seems like you're doing pretty yeah. well for yourself. I am fortunate. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You put in the work, you know, you know what it takes. Whereas a lot of these other people seem like to think that they're just going to make a million dollars off that first like house or something like that. And then they realize that, oh, there's work involved and I don't want to do work. So I'm not going to do anything, which I don't get that, but to each their own, I suppose. Yeah. It's a very time consuming job and you don't always get paid. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but when you do get paid, you get paid very well. So yeah. I, I like that. Yeah, it has to all uh, even out at the end of the year. <laughs> exactly. What you give out will come back and what you what you don't won't. So I, I was just like leaving people and giving a little bit, of, trying to brighten people's day up in the best way that I can. So I'll let you get back yeah. to it unless you got some words of wisdom for a sales guy like myself getting started, trying to find his way in this world. I don't know if you have any advice or suggestions on making deals a little bit more streamlined. Oh, so are you just started as a real estate agent or? So, so I'm an independent. So like I'm starting up my own business. Like my, that's where I'm doing like the research is like trying to figure out what it is that I can solve because I love solving mm -hmm. problems and it's mm -hmm. kind of tough trying to like get somebody say like, I can bring the horse to the water, but I can't make them drink. And that's where I've, I can see, keep running into those types of things. So I'm trying to figure out like what, the thing is that I can give because I, I, I have the work ethic, I have the drive, I have the ability to talk. So I'm just trying to help out people in the best way that I know how to, which is solving mm -hmm. problems that I myself have solved. So I'm also trying to figure out like, well, what are, what are real estate agents biggest problems? Because I love homes, I love people. So I'm just trying to like combine both of those together to create something out of thin air basically. Sure, sure. I mean, you reap what you sow. So it takes time. You it's like a farmer, you have to plant your crop and tend to it and you know 
hope that you have a good harvest, right? And that, that doesn't happen overnight. So is there not hunting involved in it though as well too? Oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, it's just planting all those seeds of people who, when they are ready, they turn to you. True. Yeah, they. It's kind of living by example. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Ollie. Well, I'll let you get back to your day. I appreciate you giving me the ten minutes of your time. I I, I don't take sure. that lightly at all. I really do appreciate it. So you have a good rest of your rest of your day, and we'll talk soon if needed. Okay. Sounds good. You as well. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>